Currently, I own six different businesses that will do multiple eight figures in revenue. And if you add social media on top of that, I have seven different companies that I'm managing. And one of the most frequently asked questions I get is, Ryan, why did you start so many businesses? Why not just focus on one? And in this video, I'm gonna answer that question as well as go over what I think about when I'm looking at a new business opportunity. If you're new to my channel, my name's Ryan Pineda. I'm a real estate investor and entrepreneur here in Las Vegas. I've flipped hundreds of homes. I own hundreds of rentals. And I've got all of those businesses that I just told you about. If you wanna learn more about those businesses, you can go to ryanpineda.com for a free consultation on how they can help you. Now, let me start off by saying that I never intended to open up all of these businesses. They all kind of just happened by accident. My first million dollar business was flipping houses. I didn't anticipate that it would become as big as it did. I was literally just trying to flip a house here or there, make six figures, and live a pretty comfy lifestyle. But in just a few years, we crossed over a million dollars and my goals started to get a little bit bigger. I started to think, what are the possibilities with house flipping? How far can I take it? What else can I do in real estate? Can I buy rental properties and grow this huge wealth? And that was my main focus. But during this time, all these other opportunities started to present themselves from the success of the house flipping business. I had a bunch of realtors that wanted to be a part of what we were doing, so we started my company Forever Home Realty. Today, we've got over 150 realtors, and I don't even really promote it that much. Another one was TrueBooks, which is my CPA company. I never wanted to get into the tax business, but all of these real estate investors and agents kept asking me who was my tax person. And so I figured I would start a company and provide a service because there was such a big demand for it. And now we have hundreds of clients all over the country. But the one that had the biggest demand was Future Flipper, which is my real estate education company. Even though some people wanted to be agents and join Forever Home, and some people wanted their taxes done, way more people wanted to learn how to flip houses just like I was. And so I started Future Flipper. I wrote a book, I created courses, I started coaching programs, and in turn, we've had thousands of students go through our coaching programs, events, and courses. And I just wanna be clear that these businesses were started because there was such high demand for these things. People kept asking me over and over, and so I started a business around them because I knew that they were a need. Well, that same demand ended up leading me to starting Pineda Capital and Lunar Ecom this year. I had a lot of people who were following me on social media that wanted to invest in our real estate deals, and so I started a fund with Pineda Capital. By doing that, we were able to raise almost $6 million to buy a $20 million apartment in Georgia. Now, even though buying a $20 million apartment building was a pretty tough feat, it wasn't as hard as people think because we already had so much stuff built in with real estate investing. I already had private lenders. We already were good at finding deals. We have experience with construction. So transitioning up to a bigger deal is just part of the natural progression of what we already had going on. This is very different than what I did with Lunar Ecom. Last year, I got an Amazon automation store as a skeptic, and I just wanted to see what would happen, mainly for the content. And to make a long story short, that store ended up doing really good, and a lot of people were asking me, Ryan, who did your store? We want a store too. And just like all of the other businesses, I said, all right, we will make a business around this and we'll provide the stores for you. And now in just a very short amount of time, we've got over 300 clients at Lunar Ecom, which we are running stores for. So that's the quick rundown of how my six core businesses came to be today. So knowing that, let's go over the two most common questions I get when people hear that story. The first is, why did I decide to go wide instead of deep? When people ask me this, I always say, I don't feel like I'm going wide. I do feel like I'm going deep with the same customer base and somewhat the same industries. All of my businesses have some kind of connection to each other where a customer in one of them is likely a customer or a client in another one. And I know this is true because when I look at my client base, I can see that they are clients in multiple businesses that I own. And some people would call this being vertically integrated. It's essentially having the same type of customers, but offering them different products and services to fit their needs. Think about it. If somebody wants to go learn real estate investing at Future Flipper, they for sure are going to need a tax person. Therefore, TrueBooks has relevancy to Future Flipper customers. The same thing is true of Pineda Capital. It can work hand in hand with Home Run Offer. Home Run Offer has been around for a long time. We're constantly looking for deals and building relationships. Well, now we can use those relationships to do big apartment deals, which Home Run Offer doesn't do. Home Run Offer just does house flips mainly in Vegas, but now we can go take all those relationships we have and throw them to Pineda Capital so that Pineda Capital can now buy these big buildings. 
And even when you take a company like Lunar Ecom, which is not real estate based in any way, it still has appeal to the same customers of Future Flipper, of Panada Capital, and of TrueBooks. Because all those people are looking for ways to create passive income, to make money, and they see Lunar Ecom as a way to get it. Savvy real estate investors are looking to buy rental properties as income, but they're also open to other forms of passive income like crypto or an e-commerce store. Most real estate investors are entrepreneurs by nature and they're willing to try new things. So even though these six companies are standalone separate companies, I've got partners in some of them, I own some of them fully, they still are part of the overall ecosystem of my brand and all of my social media and traffic that comes in. And the odds are, if you're watching this video or you followed me for a long time, you've probably thought about working with at least one of those companies, but the odds are two or more of them are relevant to you and you've thought about potentially working with them. So my point is by creating all these companies, I don't feel like I'm going wide. I do feel like I'm still going deep with the same customer base and in the same type of industry. Now, the second question I always get is, knowing that, what do I look for if I'm starting a new business? Well, there are a few things that I look for. The very first one is what I partially mentioned, and that is, does it fit my current customer base? Is this a product or service that they're looking for and need? If it doesn't fit in with my current customer base, then I probably don't wanna do it, because that means I gotta go get a whole bunch of new customers for this new endeavor. Acquiring customers is really hard for a business, so if you've already got them, figure out how you can give them more and more value. This is the reason you won't see me go and sell tables or TVs or something like that, because that has no relevance to my current customer base. I have no advantage in trying to go sell TVs. It's something that I'd have to start from scratch and get all new customers, learn a new industry, even though selling TVs can be really lucrative, it's just not something that fits my current audience and that's why I won't ever do it. Now, the second thing that I look for is the opportunity itself has to be significant and more than likely better than anything else I'm currently doing. The reason I started Lunar Ecom was because I knew e-commerce was a significant opportunity and an industry that was only gonna continue to grow. And I knew that that one company alone had the potential to do multiple eight figures a year in profit. And so I decided, yes, this is gonna be worth putting my time and effort to because the opportunity is so large. The same thing is true of Panada Capital. I think that if we continue to do things the right way, one day we could potentially own over a billion dollars in real estate. It seems like a crazy number to throw out there, but that is the potential of what you can do with a fund. If you're good at finding big deals and you're good at raising money and you're good at managing those deals, getting to a billion dollars worth of asset value is not gonna be as crazy as people think. And that's why those are the only two businesses I started this year because the opportunity is significant. I've done a series on Turo, which has done really well on YouTube, and people have asked me all the time, Ryan, why aren't you doing Turo? Why don't you partner up with me on Turo? It's such a great opportunity. And the reality is, it is a good opportunity for many people. If it was me five years ago, Turo would have been a fantastic opportunity that I would have been all over. But for me today, Turo is not a good opportunity because it's just not something I can scale really quickly and it's not something that I can really use my customer base for. Thinking about Turo as a whole, I would need to have over a thousand cars to make it match the potential that Lunar Ecom has or Panada Capital has. And obviously that's not something I wanna do because I'd rather just pursue these two opportunities because they fit in my box. And I get pitched a lot of great ideas like Turo all the time, but at the end of the day, they're just not big enough opportunities for me at this point. I'm much better off just working on my current businesses and growing those. The third thing I'm looking for when starting a new business is that it be digital. At this point, if I'm gonna start a new business, it needs to be something that is digital. I'd be really surprised if I ever bought something that was just your normal brick and mortar business. For me, digital just makes sense because of the social media presence that I've built. It makes selling things far easier nationwide. Obviously, I'm a big believer that social media is gonna keep getting bigger, but I'm also a really big believer in the metaverse and what's going on in the world of NFTs. And scaling these, what I'm calling digital businesses, are far easier than just normal businesses. I can grow Future Flipper so much easier than Forever Home. Forever Home is capped by being local to Las Vegas, so we can only get agents here while Future Flipper can get students anywhere in the world because we're not constrained to be in local. Also, digital businesses require a lot less manpower. When I look at my tax company, TrueBooks, I see that it requires a ton of labor in order to do people's taxes. There are automations and different things that we can do to help the process, but at the end of the day, it is always going to be very dependent on labor. But when it comes to NFTs or to courses or to e-com, it's much more automated and way less labor intensive 
And that means that you can scale it far bigger because the audience is bigger and your ability to build the business is much easier because you don't need as many employees. So going into the new year with the criteria that I just mentioned, the only opportunity I see at this point is getting into the NFT and metaverse space. I've been researching it heavily. I've been buying NFTs, getting around the right projects so that I can continue to learn before I launch a project of my own. When I do finally launch an NFT at some point, I don't think it's gonna be anytime soon, but when I do, you can guarantee that the research, the thought process, the people assembled, the community, and just everything that it's going to entail is something that has been really thought out and is going to bring a ton of value to my community. And that's something that I've done with all of these businesses before I launched them. I made sure that it was something that I was all into that I thought had a great chance of success. And thankfully that's been the case to this point and I'm gonna continue using this filter that I've created so I don't get myself into any businesses or opportunities that aren't worth my time or something that I really wanna do. But anyways, I hope you got value out of this video. If you did, make sure you're subscribed and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.